Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's bless the Lord as we prepare for this day's service. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We thank you for those of you who have connected with us on Facebook Live and those of you who have taken the time to physically come into the house of the Lord to worship as we prepare this sanctuary and this atmosphere to be in God's presence. We give him the praise, honor, and glory. We thank you for coming in and joining New Life Christian Fellowship at 1321 Providence Road, Brandon, Florida, under the leadership of Bishop Dr. Robert L. Register. Amen. Amen. There's so many great things that are happening. I'm excited about what God is doing in 2021. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthews, chapter number 11, verse 28, and it reads, Come unto me, all ye that are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I for I am meek and lowly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that we can come to you, Heavenly Father. We can come to you just as we are, Father. Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory that when life challenges make us heavy and we're burdened down with the cares of life, oh God, with the concerns of COVID, with the concerns of the economic pressures and financial aid, oh God, and our rent that's due, oh God, and our health issues, Father, that we know that it is you that can take all of those yokes, oh God, and make it easy for us. So not right now, God, we invite you into this sanctuary. We invite you into our hearts. And if there's anything that will hinder your presence from being manifested in our lives, hinder your anointing, we praise you right now, oh God, that you break those yokes that are hindering us in our life right now in the name of Jesus. That we will receive all that you have, God. We submit, surrender ourselves unto you. Every member that's in here, Lord, that's serving to operate this service, oh God, that those who are not able to come here physically in the house would be able to still connect with the body of Christ. We thank you for the word, oh God. We thank you for those who will be worshiping in spirit and in song. We thank you for the tithes and the offerings. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for healing right now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for the healing that you've given those, oh God, who have been hospitalized near and far, our family members, and particularly those who are connected to New Life Christian Fellowship, God. We give you the praise and honor for healing many and continuously healing Denise, oh God. And we thank and praise you for our dear brother, Christopher Johnson, who has Lord, moved out of ICU, Father God, and is, is still being taken care of by you and your hand of mercy and grace is healing his body, God. And all those who have laid in their bed of affliction silently, God, we still give you the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to welcome you once again. Amen. As our minister Carla has already said. Welcome you in this place of worship today. Another Sunday, amen, in this new, brand new year of 2021. Amen. I don't know about you, amen, but every time that I come into the house of the Lord, amen, I count it an honor and a privilege, amen, to stand before his people, whether we have two or three physically in the midst. The Bible says that he is still able to be in the midst. Amen. And so we want to encourage you, amen, to join in with worship as we lift up these songs. Amen. And you may not know all the words to the songs. Amen. Sometimes we may make the mistakes of not knowing all the words as well. Amen. But the main goal is, amen, to reach God on today. Amen. As we lift up our hands and open up our voices, lift up our voices to give him praise. 
Let's declare his glory. The word magnify means to make big. We don't have to make him big. He's already big. Let's, so let's declare it. Amen. Let's encourage, amen, our neighbors and friends, amen, to lift up and to call upon the name. Let's make that clarion call on today because it is him. Why? And it's the reason why we're here today because of his grace and his mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Highest praise today. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, we praise your name. We're going to give you all the glory. Give you all the praise.
Jesus, the highest praise. Hallelujah. Come on, Mr. Carla. He's been a provider to us all. Amen. That's what the simple the song simply says. He is a provider. Minister Carla.
Say that. There is no greater love than the love from the God we serve. There is no greater love than the love from the God we serve. There is no greater love than the love from the God we serve. There is no greater love than the love from the God we serve. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. How many know there's no greater love than from the love? From the God we serve. Amen. How many really believe that? You keep living and you keep serving. I want them to sing some more. Sing some more with me. Come on, that's two more songs I want to push over. You know? I just came back from a funeral. Very powerful. I had the distinct privilege of either going and laying my hands on my mother's gravesite. I am a wonderful time but I wasn't able to shout like I wanted to you know you, you ever go to a party for there where you wanted to really get down and them folks in there sitting all up tight and, and have you ever been to a place like that where you you know you really wanted you wanted to really cut cut a rug and everybody sitting there looking cute got their red bottoms on they want they want to sweat their clothes out you ever been, been this? And, and I said man I can't wait till I get back to church now I did, I did holler a little bit, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to overdo it. I, I didn't want to get to a place where I embarrassed myself. Hey, sound man, sound man, sound man, you gotta watch us. You gotta have to move that camera when we move. It. Amen. Somebody say, good. say, say, somebody say, we glad we got a new sound man. Amen. 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 I know, I know you didn't ask for it, but you're there now. You're the sound man. Amen. Mama put you over there. But um, th there's an old song I like. Uh, uh, Jesus is real. Yes, How many know Jesus is real? Yes, mm -hmm. And some old folks in the hospital right now singing that song. Yes, sir. Folk wish they could sing in jail. They wish they could be singing that song. I know that's right. Folk going to court is on Monday morning. They wish they could have sung that song and they had got down in there in there in their system and they wouldn't be facing that judge tomorrow. Amen. But he is good.
this will take a lot out of you, sure, but this is on you. That's something about get uh, there's a bomb. This, this. Because we have people that are in the hospital. I said we have people in the hospital. How many know we got people in the hospital? And I heard they're doing a little bit better. I'm gonna give God praise for that. You know, you know what I miss about church, man. There's no collective shout in here. It's like, well, well, man, I'm glad I'm here. Yeah, I'm glad too. That plane could have fell out the sky last night. A car could have hit me. I could have got, listen, I was just, I was just in New York visiting my family for Christmas. Took us in like, like family should. And my brother will have a stroke since I've been back. They said he can't drive no more. What is wrong with some of y'all? You ain't happy that you breathe in? I, I, I was at the hospital. I wasn't even supposed to be on the ward. I saw, I saw Deacon Chris. He, he didn't even know I was there. Don't you? Aren't you glad you can blink your eyes? Huh? Aren't you glad you can smell? Aren't you glad you can get on the phone and talk? Even though you're gossiping? Listen, nobody's going to ever get everything they want. And if you do, you won't have it tomorrow. This idea that, that you, that we're pandering, I just want something. I just got to have something. Man, you got God. What else you want? What else is it you what, what else do you really want? Because people can only satisfy you to a certain degree. You turn them into your God and God will take them from you. I'm just grateful to be alive. Amen. And I like to be around other people that really, you know, my uncle was the life of the party. He was, he was a, a guy that loved life. And I don't understand when you see people that are living and breathing. And somehow or another, they don't like it. And I have a message for somebody like that today. Amen. So this other song, give me that. We got people in the hospital now. I want to sit out on those airways. I want to sit out through, through, through Facebook that Jesus is a healer. He is a deliverer. I know him to be so. So listen, let's encourage your heart today. Listen now. Listen now. Listen, listen. So don't be, don't be discouraged. discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Joy comes in the morning. It will come. It will come. Lord That's my hope. That God is Take your time, Shibboleth.
this hero for you, your sorrow. You see it, Lee? Sing it, Shepherd. It is out there. You just don't want it. tell your story and there were so many stories T I could have told about him Cassandra so many stories you see I was like so many black and brown kids in the early 50s who grew up without a father he wasn't dead he just wasn't in our house and my uncle became like a surrogate father to us to not just my children, my mother's children, but to his other sister's six children. Whenever he came around, he was like Santa Claus. We had fun, we ate, we laughed. And one of the points that I brought out in my message yesterday was witness. When I shared with you on, the, on who would tell your story, and I used John as, as, a, as a person of interest that Jesus was telling his story, and one of the first points that I brought out was that 
that your one thing that your story should say is that you're a witness. You're a witness for somebody. And what I realized about the journey was that that his life, but he, he lived life bigger than he was. Martin, he was a small guy, maybe five, six or something. But he was huge. What call when I was at I went to one of the place they sell something in Virginia called Yak. A lot of people don't know about that filet. Yak, you gotta be down there to know about it. And a friend, in fact, I was talking to somebody and he said that they went to a Chinese restaurant somewhere in San Francisco and they asked the guy for some yak. And the guy looked at yak, what the heck is yak? They said they don't sell that nowhere but Portsmouth. So when I walked in the building, as I often do, I, I got a big mouth. You don't mind, I talk a lot. I, and I talk, I, I, I boast on God, I boast on the fact that I'm alive. I really do, because I should be dead. So sometimes I go places and I, I make noise. I let people know I'm alive, I'm there, and how I got there. And so, uh, Portsmouth was the Julius town. And so, walking in that place to, to buy some yak, I wanted to say, hey, y'all know who my uncle is. You know, But I couldn't say it because he, he's an old man now. So that really, it really, um, really kind of touched me that how time flies. Yeah. Are you listening to me? How time, you're not careful to go right by you. And so um, it was a, a good time to, to, to see family, but also to, to say bye. And I, I say this with all sincerity. Somebody is going to tell your story. And you hope they tell it right. Yeah. They hope you. If, if and, and as I was sharing, Marty, most people they're not, they don't, they're not connected, not authentically connected to mosques, churches, um, synagogues. They go every now and then. They don't have any real, real connection. They're not, as they would say, dues payers or tithes payer, where they have there. There's a legitimacy to their relationship is very loose. Everything that we do today is almost loose. It's, there's no solidness to it. And so like my uncle, he didn't have a relationship with the church but he did have a relationship with God. So God allowed for one of his family members to preach his home going. Not because he had a relationship with the church but because in his family there was somebody that had a relationship with God. Anybody hear what I'm saying? So what's going to happen as you see life start to unfold, there'll be less and less funerals inside the church. And if they are, it's because they've come through the back door, not because they have a relationship directly with that church. Am I making any sense to anybody? Am I making sense? You know, it's, you can't go places unless you, like if you go to the hospital call up today, one of the first things they ask you is, do you have, do you have medical insurance? Now, the, the hospital, has, they can't deny you treatment, but they want their money. And, and, and so the church, in terms of how we see it, we don't see it right anymore. And that's because the people that are inside the church aren't acting right. And so all they have to see is us. And if we are indicative of what the church is, this is why our numbers are declining and why people have lost trust in the church. Am I talking to anybody? So I was sharing that to them in, in, uh, in, in the best way that I could. And I was sharing about how my uncle was a witness. Um, uh, as John was a witness, John was a witness to Christ. My uncle was a witness to, to show us that Jim Crow, systemic racism, and all those things could not hold you down. That even, even your own skin complexion could not hold you back if you had a desire to live. And he lived. And he sowed that seed in, inside of us. And most of us that embrace it are living. We're living life on our own terms. How many people in here want to live life on their own terms? See, I ain't getting a whole lot of hate, man. Just a lot of shit. Because you know what happened, Balea? Most people live life based on compromise. Yeah. Based on settling settlements. They're not living lives based on the life that they want to live. They only dream about that. They only wish about that. But you you, you, you have time. Somebody say, I still have time. 
I, have, I still have time to live the life that I want. Stop talking about what you want to do and start living. You know what I said? Stop talking about it and being about it. Let me just share some scripture with you this morning to support my thesis. In the book of Judges, chapter 6, verse 1 through verse 13, there's a series of scriptures that will support my my sermon this morning but first let's do our confession if you have a bible or something that you're reading from this morning if you just hold it in your hand let me know you're with me amen amen sometimes even in a group like this people are still not unified which is so sad someone say this is the word of god this is my word from god obedience to this word is the only weapon that i have if I read this word and do exactly as it says, according to the book of Joshua, chapter number one, I shall prosper. You want to prosper, don't you? I shall prosper in every area of my life. I can be what this word says I can be. I can do what this word says I can do. Thank you, Father, for revealing your word to me today. Somebody say amen. Um, I have to say this over and over. There's a couple of things I want to reiterate. This is the public health announcement. First, me, Silva, or anybody that you see in this place, Carla, Anna, uh, uh, Cassandra, Valerie, Dana, Sherwood, Valeria, T, anybody, Shana, anybody that's here, Leonard, we do not no kind of way want to catch the virus. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say it. None of us that are in here with me right now have any wish. It's not on our wish list. I want to catch the virus. Like, like Cassandra, I have to admit, I was so poor. I used to think if I get hit by a car and sue it. But then I thought against that because them cars, you know, it's something about steel and bones. I ain't had the nerve. I thought about it. You hear me, Sherwood? I even sometimes thought, I ain't really think that much about robbing no bank because you know, I ain't had that kind of that kind of spirit. Anybody hear what I'm saying? But but as 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 as, uh, as I think about this particular word um, this morning. I'm, I'm reminded I'm, I'm reminded of so many different things, so many different things that flooded my mind, but specifically this, this particular word as, as it relates to, to where I'm at. I've been in a lot of places sometimes I didn't want to be. I've been in the back seat of a, a, a police car. Didn't want to be there. Anybody hear me? I didn't want to be there in the back seat of that car. And 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 so some of you ask me, the pastor, how do you get messages? What do you how do what, what do you get them from? What what happens? How do you get inspired? Well, I hear things. I hear things, I see things, I study things, and then God speaks to me. And he gave me this thought, this one thought. This one thought. I'm going to share this story with you as I read these scriptures. Give me one second. Where are we at? How many glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Let me say this also. Just some, some uh, public service announcements. As really, listen, the Kobe thing, please, wear your mask. Somebody say, wear your mask. Wear your mask. Say, wear your mask. wear your mask. Watch this. And when you take your mask off, be very, very careful not to put your hands in your mouth. You hear me? Don't put your hand. Make sure you have hand sanitizer. Make sure you are constantly subconscious about whether your hands have touched something and then touched your mouth. This is something you have to do due diligence. Why? Because the idea is if you live around other people, you could be that poison bullet that kills folk. We want to be safe. I can promise you this. I, I went to Virginia. 
I, 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 I stayed in the hotel, but guess what? I didn't get too close to people. I kept my hands clean. I kept a distance from folk. And I have been doing this for almost a year now. And I've had three tests, and all three of my tests came back negative. And I've also taken my first shot. So, so obviously, I've learned how to maneuver in this kind of environment. And when you come here, I'm trusting that you have. Why? Because if you haven't, you could possibly contaminate somebody in here. Yeah. We don't want to have that. I'm making myself clear. This is what they call a public service announcement. And then uh, let's get to the text. Let's get let's get to the text because um, he begins reading of God's word. Yet again, the people of Israel went back to doing evil in God's sight. God put them under the domination of Midian for seven years. Midian overpowered Israel because of Midian, the people of Israel made for themselves hideouts in mountain caves and forts. When Israel planted its crops, Midian and Amalek, the Easterners, would invade them, camped in their fields and destroyed their crops all the way down to Gaza. They left nothing for them to live on, neither sheep nor ox nor donkey. It was in bad shape. Bringing their cattle and tents, they came in and took over like an invasion of locusts, and their camels passed counting. They marched in, devastated the country. The people of Israel reduced into grinding poverty by Midian. They cried out to God for help. One time, when the people of Israel had cried out to God because of Midian, God sent them a prophet with this message. God... The God of Israel says, I delivered you from Egypt. I freed you from the life of slavery. I rescued you from Egypt's brutality and then from every oppressor. I pushed them out of your way and gave you their land. And I said to you, I'm your God. Your God. Don't for a minute be afraid of the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But you didn't listen to me. One day the angel of God came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Azberite, whose son Gideon was threshing wheat in the winepress out of the sight of the Midianites. And the angel of God appeared to him and said, God is with you, O mighty warrior. And Gideon replied, with me, God is with me, you got to be kidding me. My master, if God is with me, why has all this happened to us? You might better ask themselves that question. Where are all the miracles and wonders our parents and grandparents told us about? telling us didn't God deliver us from Egypt the fact is God has done nothing to do with us God has nothing to do with us he has turned us over to Midian so for the scriptures I want to preach on the subject just for a few moments it wasn't supposed to be like this look at somebody say neighbor it wasn't supposed to be. Let's pray. Father, have your way in this place. So many things have gone on in our lives. Some things have gone on that we had no control of. We find ourselves in a place of despair and agony. And we begin to point the fingers at people and say it was because of this or because of that. But no matter how many people we explain our problem, our situation to, no matter how legitimate or authentic it sounds to the person we're speaking to, it never changes our location. It wasn't supposed to be like this. Help us understand how we got here and help us understand how we can move forward. We give you thanks in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. Somebody say amen. Amen. Come on and clap your hands if you can. 
you know, when I was in Virginia the other day, I, um, it's hard not to reflect on history. I'm a history major. And when I say history, I have been studying history all my life, people, places, and things. Been to about 52 or more countries in my life. I've spent over 20 years of living outside of this country. So when I go places, my mind automatically takes pictures and snapshots of people, places, and things. And I could remember going south as a young lad, probably from the time maybe seven, eight, or nine years old, so it was the early 60s, and going back to this particular South, it was a repressive South. It was a South that was not indicative for opportunities for people like you and I. It was no wonder that my mother left Portsmouth at the age of 17 with only a ninth grade education. Mm. It was because there was no opportunity and they felt almost constricted as if the, it, it was so stifling with Jim Crow and oppression that the only way was out was to go to a place that you'd never been before. Imagine, imagine that you're living in a place that you were raised in, that you get to a place as a young adult, you realize that there are not just limited opportunities, but there are really no opportunities for you to express who you are. And your own family can't do anything for you because they got less education, less resources than you. And so coming to the airport, I realized that even though on the surface, things had changed, underneath the surface, the system was still the same. When I went to, 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 to Virginia, the purpose of going there was to, to fertilize my uncle. But I didn't realize that my mother's also buried, not in Norfolk, but she's buried in a place called Chesapeake. And then when I was young, I thought these places like 30 and 40 and 60 and 80 miles apart, but they're all connected to each other. And so on my way in, instead of checking in with the hotel, instead of checking in with my aunt, something said, go and find your mother's grave. And I realized something, the place, the city that my mother was born, they didn't even have a black graveyard there. Oh, God help me. They, the, the, in Portsmouth, they only had white graveyards. So black people had to be buried in a place called Chesapeake that was way down the road somewhere. Still the remnants. On the surface, things have changed. But the guts are still the same. And I remember trying to find, because the, 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 the person that died would always take us to the grave. Now he's not there, and I'm on my own. I don't know where my mama's at. They gave me some papers that said 280 and this and that, and I'm trying to figure it out, and I see a grave robber, and I, not a grave robber, but a grave digger. I say, hey, man, I'm trying to find something. He said, hey, I'm going to get off. Hey, I've been out here all day. I've got to go home. I said, please, man, I'm from upset. I'm just trying to find my mama. Finally, I found where she was at. Now I know where she's at. And you're saying, Pastor, why are you saying that? Because it shouldn't be like that. It, it shouldn't have been that way. It shouldn't be that, 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 that blacks had one cemetery and whites had another. It shouldn't be that you can't find your loved ones because they don't have the same empathy and the same resources as somebody with a different skin complexion. I wish I had somebody could, could hear what I'm saying in this building this morning. Somebody said, I'll not be this way. In the text this morning. As a matter of fact, have you ever said to yourself, I'm sick of this? You know what? I ain't gonna say that because y'all may not think I'm saying. Have you, are you, I'm sick of this. I'm just uh, wake up in the morning. I'm just sick of this job. I'm sick of this man. I'm sick of this woman. I'm sick of these kids. I'm sick of this house. I'm sick of cleaning. I'm sick of going. I'm sick of eating the same lunch. Anybody wake up like that? Say I've just had enough. Or, 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 or do you wish you, you could say that? E e even though you even though you might not say it because you got to go there every day, do you wish you could say it? See, the reason sometimes, sweetheart, the reason why people don't say they're sick of it because they got to go to it and they realize if they keep saying they're sick of it, they won't go to work one day. Do you wish you could say that? 
why and then and then, and then the follow-up question is then why have you stayed there day after day why do you stay in a place that you despise why do you stay in a place that you sick of day after day after day after, what what you already know you're sick of it. You calling people, you're telling people, you're stomping, you're cussing, you're mad, you ain't eating, you ain't combing your hair, you ain't washing up, you ain't, come on, talk to me. You're in a place that you don't want to be and you're still there day after day, week after week, month after month. Watch this, year after year. Decade. There's some people that have been in marriages. There's some people that have been on jobs. They despise. Are y'all the one be honest in here? The only why only reason why they go there is because that job allows them to keep paying their mortgage and their life insurance. The only reason why they go there is because they're too afraid to step out in faith and move in what God told them to move in. The only reason why they're there is because it's their security blanket. But if they could step into the boundaries of what they've been dreaming and hoping for, they would have left that job and left that nigga and left that woman a long time ago. Ain't nobody talking back to me. Decade after decade, standing there. And that's what Israel was facing. Year after year, after year, after year, after year, after year. No matter what they did, the situation didn't change. And when you look at us as a people, as a people, as a people, 12% of the population situation still ain't changed. Listen, I went to Norfolk and the reason why I know things have not changed for Leia is because the legislative body is still white. House of Representatives is still white. The governorship is still white and ain't nothing wrong with white but there's something wrong with white when white doesn't understand what my needs are. Something, there's something wrong with white when white has been ruling for so long and when you look around everything is messed up from the top to the bottom so why is it if things ain't supposed to be like this why is it year after year after year we're not telling our kids to at least consider political science at least consider law. At least consider something that could transform their domination over us. But somehow, all these years, still in the same ghettos. A ghetto is no different here than in Soweto. A ghetto is no different in Soweto than in Honduras or in Portuguese. A ghetto is a ghetto. Or in Haiti or in Mozambique, a ghetto is, and you can always tell where we are at. There's a cloud. There's a stigma. And my question is, it ain't supposed to be like this. How, how is this supposed to be? Did, did I wake up one day and find out I was poor? Did I wake up one day and all of a sudden I realized that I was considered second class? Did I, in this great country, this great marvelous country, did I wake up one morning, fall out the bed, hit my head and realize that I was considered a second class citizen when the Emancipation Proclamation, when the Constitution said, I got just as much rights as everybody else. And when I get in my car and I drive on 75, I see the biggest Confederate flag flying hmm. in the whole U.S. It ain't supposed to be like this. But it is. So that's where the text starts. The text starts with Gideon saying, man, how do we get this way? 
And see, most most brown and black people, the, the, the sad thing about us is we can't go back with maybe one or two generations. So we can't really put together or piece together why we are the way we are. Oh, God, help me in here. We don't know why we schizophrenic. We don't know why we can't settle with one man. We don't know why we can't settle with one woman. We don't know why. Why? Because we don't have all the pieces to the puzzle. We don't know why we always angry. Why? Your mother was angry. Your grandma was angry. All of them was number of witches. It was all hateful. You're hateful because you come from a hate bunch of hateful people. Had you known that, you would have known what you should have concentrated on for your deliverance because you got in church and you're still bound with the devil. Oh, I wish I had some help in this building this morning. Gideon said, Master, if God is with us, why am I broke? If God is with me, why are me and my wife at each other's throats? If God is with me, why are all my kids crazy, ain't got no job, and ain't helping me with these dishes? If God is with us, why are we considered second-class citizens? And I think that's a good question to ask. God is with me. It ain't supposed to be like this. If God is with me, I ain't supposed to be like this. Why? Because he's a covenant God. Let's show with that. Somebody say he's a covenant God. Uh -huh. And watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Here's the problem with most of us. Is that because we don't know him to be a covenant God. We have slipped away from that God slowly but surely see the problem with Israel if you read if you read from Joshua to Judges as long as Joshua was there as long as the elders were there to fortify the people in terms of who they were and what they what they were about their their makeup who they were who their God was they stayed right but once all the elders dropped off, and see, what people don't realize, this virus has a, has a plan. It has a plot. Did it come from God? No. It was released by the enemy. But look who is killing the elderly. I saw a report just yesterday or this morning that in Texas, in Texas, uh, uh, I think out of, out of uh, uh, 100%, 59.6% of the people that are dying are brown and black people, or 63. So we're dying at an alarming rate from this virus. Why do you think it's so hard for them to get vaccines? Because they want some more of your... It should be like this. So Gideon says, hey man, Hey, it shouldn't be this way. Our grandparents told us that you delivered us. Our grandparents told us that we were in bondage in Egypt. Our grand they used to tell us, they used to brag on you. Today we don't brag on God. The reason why we don't brag on God because we're not that close to him to brag on him. See, in order to brag on somebody, you got to be real close to them. You gotta have a relationship with him. But see, we can't, and, and even, watch this. I understand that the virus is out here, but you in the grocery store, look at me, I'm talking to you. You in the cleaners, you still getting your hair done. You ain't scared to get your hair done no more. You getting your hair done. Some of y'all getting your eyebrows, come on, stop, and getting your nails done. You getting your feet done, you going to buy groceries. You're doing everything, but you, you can't come to church. You don't want to come to church. You just don't. Uh, 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 you know, the virus in the, no, the virus is in the church if you're dealing with people that are irresponsible. Okay. When you come through this door, I'm demanding that you are responsible. Yeah. If you're not, not found out you're not, you're going to have to deal with me. Yeah. But there's no reason for you at some point to come to church. Uh, I, I, I'm scared of virus. Yeah, you scared of virus. I saw you downtown at the Chinese restaurant eating. You wasn't scared of virus then. I saw you at McDonald's going to get a pickup. You wasn't scared of virus. Yeah, but I, I, church. Yeah, I'm church. 
How did we get here? How did they get there? Because of sin. Things shouldn't be this way. Your marriage shouldn't be like that. It's that way and it's going to stay that way. If you don't do a few things, and then let me give you a couple points. The first thing that you gotta, the first point that you gotta recognize is how you got there. How did we get here? That's what. The, see, see, it, 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 it's, 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 it's one thing to realize I am a bum. It's one thing to realize I'm a drunk, I'm an alcoholic, I'm a whole mama. It's one thing to realize I can't keep my pants up or keep my pants down. It's one thing to realize who you are. It's another thing to admit it. See, sometimes we realize it, but we won't admit it. We know who we are, Belair, but we just won't admit it. And when people call us on it, we sit there and fight and argue with them and won't admit that we are jacked up from the flow up. So the first place of recovery is admitting who you are. And Gideon was saying, look here, we're messed up. My mama's messed up. Parents is messed up. Everybody's messed up. Look at verse 14. He said, but God faced him and said, go, go in this strength that is your save Israel million. Save Israel million. Have not just said you. Look at verse 15. And he said, he said how, 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 is, and we, what could I ever save Israel? Look at me. Look at me. And that's what's wrong with some of us right now. The reason why we're in the rut we in is we keep looking at ourselves and we can't see the God that's still in us that wants to break out of us. He was hiding and God was waiting for him and said, hey, I see you're hiding. I know why you're hiding. You're hiding because your family has gotten away from my will. But I've got good news for you. If you're ready, I'll get you out of that basement. If you're ready, I'll take you out of that bad marriage. If you're ready, I'll take you out of that bad job. If you're ready, I've got news for you. I'll lift you up. I'll place you on heels. You're going to make me preach in here. I said, I feel like preaching. I said, I feel like preaching. There might be a button here for, right here for handheld. I said, I feel like preaching this morning. I was at my uncle's funeral yesterday. And I realized how much he had done for so many people in such a short time. And I realized, I said, I realized. I said, I realized. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. All right, I'm there. I realized. I realized. I realized something. You see, God told Gideon, get up and go do it. Our problem is that we're not sick and tired of being sick and tired. Well, let me tell you what I'm sick and tired of. I'm sick and tired of you telling me about the same problem that you've had for the last two years. I'm sick and tired of you being sick and tired of what you're sick and tired of that you won't make no changes in. There is a God that's able to do exceedingly. I wish I had a witness in here. Y'all gonna make me holler in here. I said, I'm gonna holler in this place because I knew God is able. I said, I knew God is able. What is he able to do? He's able to do exceedingly. I said he's able to do abundantly. But you got to realize, the Bible says that Gideon realized, he said, I'm the weakest. I'm the runt of the litter. And once you realize that it's never been about you, once you realize that in the place that you're at, you said, how did I get here? All my sisters are divorced. And it looked like I'm headed for the same divorce court. How did I get here? They're about to fire me on my job. I can't afford to get fired. I have not got yet to retirement age. How did I get here? How did I get to a place where I have no friends, no real friends that I can count on? Well, the first thing you got to do is admit you ain't been much of a friend yourself. You got to admit I'm still going to preach. You're there because you didn't recognize.
recognize all that God had for you. The reason why Gideon yes. was hiding. The reason why Gideon was hiding is because he didn't know the God of his ancestors. He didn't know the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, and the God of Isaac. Had he stopped for a moment and remembered how God delivered them from the hands of the Egyptians. How he stopped for a moment and remembered that they were God's own people. <laughs> the apple of his eyes, they would have realized that God would have moved heaven and earth for them. But what happens to us over a period of time, we become relaxed. We become lax on Netflix, on Facebook, yeah. on that book, and other books that we forget the master. We don't pray no more. We don't read no more. We don't praise no more. So when trouble comes, you got no way of getting out of it. And then you scratch your head and you start asking the question, I ain't supposed to be like this. It ain't supposed to be like this. I'm 50 years old and I'm by myself. It ain't supposed to be like this. I'm 67 years old and I'm still angry. It ain't supposed to be like this. Not when I say I serve a God who sits high and looks low. Who the Bible says at his right hand there's pleasures forevermore. Why are you angry? Why are you dismayed? Why are you disquieted? Hope thou in God. I wish I had a church this morning. The Bible says that Gideon realized that this situation wasn't what it's supposed to be. He said it wasn't supposed to be like this. If you did it for them, then you can do it for me. Our problem is we won't get up. I wish I had somebody that would get on their feet, give somebody an imaginary high five and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, I'm coming out better than I went in. It ain't supposed to be like this. When I want breakfast, it should be served. I should be fighting with somebody that should be loving me. It ain't supposed to be like this. Somebody say, yeah. I'm not supposed to be sitting here hoping my kids call me on my birthday. All the hell that I went through for them. It ain't supposed to be like this. I'd have been everything to everybody. And here I am all by myself. It ain't supposed to be like this. Well, I've got good news for you. You better choose your new friends wisely. You better make a difference this time because your life ain't getting no younger on this time. Make sure that you make the right connection so that when you get sick, real friends can come. I wish I had a witness in here. Gideon said, oh, I'm a little shaky. I need some help. Most of us in here, our faith is shaking. But God told me to tell you, if you came here this morning, you got just enough faith to move your mountain. Whatever your mountain is, if you came here this morning, your mountain, I said your mountain, I dare you to wave your hands in the air and say bye-bye your mountain. Kiss Hey God. Kiss Bobby. Whatever their names are. Kiss them all. Goodbye. Why? Because God got something better. Somebody say something better. It ain't supposed to be like this. You in one room and I'm in another room. It ain't supposed to be like this. I ain't supposed to be in the hospital all by myself waiting to die it ain't supposed to be like this and i know it ain't supposed to be like this and that's why god stopped by this morning to tell you to 
get up. Get up from where you're at. It ain't supposed to be like this. That relationship you're in, it ain't supposed to be like this. Somebody holler for me. Proud of money, that we was crazy when we was born. We didn't realize that we came from people that settled. We didn't know nothing else but to settle. But I got good news. Settling days is over. I wish I had a church this morning. I'm gonna be around when the pandemic is over. I'm gonna be able to give somebody the biggest high five and the biggest hug. You want to know why? Because we be may endure for nine, but joy. Gideon said, it ain't supposed to be like this. You ain't supposed to be broke. If your father owns all the gold and the silver, if you're broke, it's because you've been slip sliding You've been slip sliding away. That's what they call the backslider. But I'm glad, I'm so glad that God is married to the backslider. So if you slip slide away, he'll bring you back. But you gotta admit, you where you at by the choices you made. I heard Gideon say, why are we here? It ain't supposed to be like that. And God had to take him all the way back to the first, to the to the sixth chapter and the first verse. And he told him, you're like this because of the sins that your mom and daddy committed. You're like this because they wouldn't listen to me. You're like this because every time I said the word, they ignored me. They turned their TV on. They talked to their friends. They got on Facebook. They did everything but give me honor and give me glory. I know it wasn't supposed to be like this. You wasn't supposed to be by yourself in your old age. But you wouldn't listen. I feel like preaching this morning. I hear, I hear the Lord say, it's going to be just like this. If you don't make up in your mind and admit where you're at, I wish I had somebody would open up their mouth and say, Lord, it ain't supposed to be like this. I ain't supposed to be working at 60. It ain't supposed to be like this. I should have been retired a long time ago, eating and living in the laps of luxury. It wasn't supposed to be like this. I should be working my phone, my fingers to the bone. Not like this, not when I have a God who loves me, who died for me, who made a way. Gideon knew, he knew by the process of mental deduction that something was wrong with how he was living based on all the stories he's been told. Something should be wrong with you if you're a person of color and you know anything about the 13th, the 14th, and 15th Amendment and you're still living like you're living. You, oh God, help me in here. Uh, I've come against the systems, these, these, these rigged and these crooked systems, even in the education system, that put our teachers in danger. I come against every demonic force, every lying demon, every spell, everybody that puts money and profit over people. I pray you pull every institution down in this state, God. Pull the governor down and pull everybody that's associated with him that looks at profit and looks at money more than they look at people. I bind up the works of the enemy and I decree and declare that Florida is a diverse state. Florida is a state that looks out for everybody's interest. In the mighty name of Jesus, Florida is not just a white state. It's not just a gay state. It's not just a red state. It's not just a Christian state. It's a state for every human being that's an American. And Father, we pray. We pray right now. It ain't supposed to be like this. That flag shouldn't be flying over there. 
It ain't supposed to be like this. The people stormed the White House. Stormed the White House and told me they're going to kill people. It ain't supposed to be like this. It ain't supposed to be like this after the election. They're saying somebody stole it. It's not supposed to be like this. And our families, those that come to the church and city and lift up their hands and call themselves saints and they know doggone well they live in a lie, it ain't supposed to be like this. We've been living lives that settle. Lord, I ain't settling no more for nothing that's not of you, God. Somebody said, Jesus, I refuse to settle anymore. Why would he die if he didn't want you to have his best? It ain't supposed to be like this. Nobody should throw food at you. Nobody should treat you like you're not a person or, or you're not a person that, that, has, that has, has concerns. If they treat you, then you ain't got no business being there. It ain't supposed to be like that. You shouldn't be with people who don't respect you and do don't honor you. It ain't, and if you're that way, it's something wrong with your brain. Yeah. And then, of course, Gideon had to have some proof. He had to have God show him several different things to show him that he wasn't lying. Why? Because his family and he had drifted so far away from the cross. Some of y'all need so much proof. Here's the proof you woke up this morning. Here's the proof you breathing. Here's the proof you got here to this church without an Uber. Here's the proof. You got food to eat today. Here's the proof. Death didn't hit your house last night. Here's the proof. I know you ain't got that man you want. You ain't got that house you want. You ain't got that car you want. But you got some stuff that you ain't even give God credit for yet. It ain't supposed to be like this where people don't come to church because it's COVID. Man, come on. You go everywhere else. You go everywhere else. And I'm not saying that everybody should be here on Sunday. In some churches, they're doing registry. We, we, we're not that high tech yet. But some of you have not been here in ages. Ages. And all you want to do is pontificate. This is where the fish bite in church. Hey, you want you go everywhere else? You get your hair done. You don't think you get Kobe when you get your hair? Oh, that, yeah, you get Kobe there. But guess what? Your hair is more important. So you risk getting Kobe by getting your hair and your nails done. I bet you your nails. I bet you your hair and your nails are done right now. You ain't even in church. <laughs> and you think somebody gonna follow you? Nobody following people that are that are that shallow. Shallow. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Nothing. And I'm not saying I'm not throwing aspersions at anybody, but listen, this nothing's gonna stop me from coming here, body. Nothing. Why? He done too much for me. I'm not a fool. He's he's taught me how to live in the pandemic. Keep a mask on, Negro. Keep your hands clean. Don't be kissing people. Some folk get the pandemic because they're kissing folk. Got folk all in their face. I don't get around people. I don't let people get all in my face and talk, 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 talk. No, why? I don't want the pandemic. I stay away from crowds. I watch where I put my hands. You can do it and you can still come to church. Somebody give God some praise in this place. This message has been a blessing to you and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want to take this time to introduce him to you. Yeah. You give me your hand. And you give God your heart. Yeah. And repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I recognize that there's nothing that I can do to change my condition. But I heard that you are the Savior. I heard that you were my propitiation, that you died for my sins. With this confession that you died for my sins, I am saved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for saving me. And thank you for making me part of the family of God. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, if you pray that prayer, 
your life is changed. Yeah. You have just as much rights as anybody in this building. Yeah. Exercise those rights. You know, Gideon said, we ain't got nothing. And God told Gideon, get up. Go rescue your people. And that weekly set Israel free. I prophesied right now, I don't care how weak, how insignificant, how little money, how little influence you got. I prophesied, get up. It's your season. It's your season to move into what God has ordained for you. It is your season and it's your time to walk in the authority of your miracle. Father, I release that on them now in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's take up an offering. Hallelujah. Actually, the third death. Um, I lost my son. We lost my son. And we lost our son in November. And my uncle, who just died, his son died one week after my son. So we lost three men, and ain't that many of us, in a matter of four months. So I said, "Listen to your prayers." And, and I say that because, listen, it's, death is not unusual to anybody. We all gonna be there, one way or the other. But I do solicit your prayers. I thank you for praying. I look for your prayer tomorrow. Any announcements? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for the visitor coming out. You enjoy yourself today? Oh, yeah. Amen. We're so glad you came out. Amen. We did want to acknowledge our visitor, and we do thank you. You know, we saw you leave out for a moment, and we said, hey, is everything okay? And we saw that you went to go get another young lady. Amen. So we thank and praise God for both of you for coming here. And we trust and hope that something was said or done or shared or saying that really encouraged your spirit for this week and that you would come back and join us again. Amen. We also want to remind you all that on this coming Friday, January 29th at 7 o'clock p.m., we will have a Zoom wow meeting and we have a special treat. We have two of our young women, uh, Felicia Darns and Celeste Powell will be giving and sharing our discussion on two selected women in the Bible. Amen. So we ask those women to join in and join someone else. We will be sending out 
a text message with that instructions and the meeting identification, and that will come from 313131. So we encourage you to support these young ladies because even the following Friday, we will resume our normal schedule once, uh, Friday, first Friday, the Zoom, and third Friday. But this Friday is a special treat for trying to encourage our young people to be a part of it. Amen. We want to also let you all know the leaders auxiliary meeting. I will be sending out a message after I re-coordinate with our pastor in reference to when we were going to meet and where we're going to meet a leaders meeting. So leaders stand by for that message to come out so that you all know and we all know um, that time for that meeting to host. We encourage you all, those of you who are on the prayer call, and if you have a prayer request and like to send or know of someone that is going through challenges or in the hospital, please send a message and let us know so that we can ensure that we're keeping our members, particularly those lifted up in prayer. I believe that concludes the announcements. Oh, one other thing. Our... Um, our leader of our usher, Sister Valerie, has moved to Orlando, but she's still going to be serving here. But if there's anyone out there would like to come in and still serve on the ushers who are able to come in, amen, on the usher board, amen, we, we're in need of that. We understand those of you who are home and not able to serve because of pre-existing conditions and not putting yourself at risk and we want you to be comfortable and as bishop said we're trying to do everything that we can and we're trusting that you're safe as we come together and it is a sacrifice and we do trust god in it and we understand those of you who are not but those of you who are able to come in amen and serve a sunday or so in ushering please give us a call contact sister valerie contact myself so that we can continue to operate amen in this house amen god bless you this concludes the announcements bishop amen, amen. Let's, stand. let's stand for the benediction wow just got word that my friend keenan the doctor said today was the first day they saw some improvement. Amen. The prayer line is for praying, not for teaching. It's for praying, not for educating on teaching. We teach and educate on teaching in the church. When we get on the prayer line, it's for praying, it's for interceding, it's for crying out to God. Amen. I want to thank those that get on that prayer line and cry out. They work. When I saw Chris the other day, uh, it was touch and go, and I just found out yesterday because I kept calling that he's doing better. He said they were talking to him, and, and he wasn't. He didn't have to go on a ventilator. So keep praying. Keep praying and keep social distancing until you get your vaccination. Amen. And even when you get it, don't act like you're Superman. I went up there, Marty. Like I was King Kong. The guy said, how did you get up here? I said, have you ever heard of white supremacies? He said, huh? I said, this is pastor supremacy. He said to me, you better pass your supremacy self out of here before you catch COVID. So I heard him made a beeline and got out of there. But that's how determined I am about my members. If you go or you or anybody, I'm coming to see you. That's what we do. But with this COVID-19, all bets are off. We don't want you catching it. Not a mild form, not a light form. Somebody say no forms. No form. Lift up your hands. Father, we lift up our hands because we don't want to catch it. Not a light form, not no forms of COVID. We promise God to, to walk circumspectfully. We promise God that we know that we have the possibility to be carriers of this deadly disease. So we're going to do everything that we can not to be facilitators. And we give you thanks now unto him who's able to keep each of us from falling. He alone has the power to present each of us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to him be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit keep us 
until we get vaccinated, until we get to the other side. And God, we lift up this new administration, the Biden-Harris administration, and all that they're going to do. And we lift up the previous administration. We pray your peace upon them. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. We, we love y'all. Take us home, Sherwood.